What's up and welcome to another episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. Welcome to my channel. This is where I review primarily laptop tech, but my real focus is just anything around gaming. That's my passion. And today we're talking about the RTX 3070 and 3080 because there have been some leaks recently, some Geekbench 5 OpenCL, as well as leaking the specs of the new GPU. And if these benchmarks and specs are correct, we're in for a big upgrade in performance, at least in some titles and at some resolutions but it will vary a lot now I don't want to overhype this I want to keep our expectations realistic coming up here because on January 12th we should see an official presentation from Nvidia announcing the RTX 3060 3070 and 3080 for laptops they also might announce some new desktop GPUs hard to say now without further ado let's take a look at the specs and see what we might be able to expect in an RTX 3070 and 3080 laptop now I'll have sources to these leaks in the video description down below if you'd like to check them out. All right, so how does the RTX 3080 Max-Q compare to the RTX 2080 Max-Q? First of all, we have an eight nanometer core process, which means we're just gonna be more power efficient and we're gonna be able to do more things with the same amount of electricity being pushed through the components, which is crucial to big improvements in performance. Compared to the RTX 2080 Max-Q, which uses a 12 nanometer process, that's a 33% reduction in core nanometer size, so we should see massive power efficiency gain. Now, when you compare the CUDA cores between the 2080 and the 3080, you can see that we have more than double the CUDA cores, but don't read too much into that because it's on a different GPU architecture. Really, we'll have to see how the CUDA core counts affect performance when we get to actual benchmarks, which we also have a leaked benchmark to compare things with as well, which we'll get to in a moment. Now, the 3080 Max-Q should have improved RT and Tensor cores as well, so better performance in RTX and DLSS comparatively speaking. Speaking, how much of an improvement we don't really know for sure. Now it's also rumored that we'll get up to 16 gigs of RAM in some 3080 Max Qs, but some also might only have 8 gigs of RAM. Most games only need less than 8, so I don't really think that's a huge upgrade unless you know you're going to play a game that's going to need more VRAM. And then when we compare the RTX 3070 versus 2070, we can see that we have an eight nanometer core process versus a 12 nanometer core process. We get, again, more than double the CUDA cores at 5,120 versus 2304. And again, we have improved ray tracing and tensor cores and eight gigs of RAM versus eight gigs of RAM, so no difference there. Now, assuming that these specs are correct, we should see a notable gain in performance, but how much is the giant question mark? It appears we have an authentic authentic benchmark from Geekbench 5 and here is the results. The RTX 3080 Max-Q scored 139,000 points, while an RTX 2080 Max-Q scored only 88,000. That's a 58% increase in performance that is enormous. If this benchmark is accurate, we're looking at more performance from a laptop RTX 3080 versus a desktop 2080 Ti. Now, how did the RTX 3070 Max-Q do? It got 111,000 versus the 74,000 of the RTX 2070 Max-Q. And that is a 49% gain, which is also pretty massive. And I wanna point out that this is a much bigger gap between the RTX 3070 and the 3080 than it was in the previous generation. Now, I think it's really important to understand that this is a synthetic benchmark. This is not gonna be representative of a lot of games out there. Now, due to the nature of how synthetic benchmarks can be inaccurate or maybe just different generational differences in GPUs can cause synthetic benchmarks to be a bit wonky, I wanted to correlate my numbers between 3D Mark Time Spy graphics benchmark score and this Geekbench 5 OpenCL. And here's what I found. In my RTX 3080 versus my RTX 2080 Super Max Q score, I had a 78.9% performance difference in Time Spy graphics. But in Geekbench 5, there is a 108% performance difference. So I think, again, it is important to keep in mind that this is just a synthetic benchmark, and it's, again, not representative of the entire gaming experience. It just gives us a potential taste of what the performance difference might be under optimal conditions. As many of you know, game performance can be bottlenecked by a number of different components 
on a system? Do you have dual channel memory? Do you have a powerful enough CPU? Is the game optimized to take full advantage of the GPU performance? Does it have RTX and DLSS enabled? A great example of this is in my recent review of an RTX 3080 desktop from ABS. In my Far Cry 5 benchmark at 1080p, we saw an 11 FPS gain over the RTX 2080 Super in my M17 R3. And that's a difference between a laptop GPU and a desktop GPU, so it should be even bigger difference in theory, but it's not that big of a jump because Far Cry 5, especially at 1080p, is very CPU bottlenecked. But when we take a look at the Shadow of the Tomb Raider, you can see there's a bigger gap in performance, 149 FPS versus 116. What that tells us is Shadow of the Tomb Raider is less CPU bound and it's more GPU bound, so we're getting a bigger performance gain. And keep in mind, this is again at 1080p resolution. If this benchmark was done at a 4K resolution, we'd be looking at an even bigger gap. So what do these benchmarks tell us? Well, first of all, if you game at 1080p, you're gonna look at severely reduced performance gains. You're not gonna get 58%. Now, if you game at 1440p or 4K resolutions, you'll see bigger improvement gains compared to 1080p gaming. And that's simply because it's more likely to be bottlenecked by the GPU and not the CPU. Lastly, if you were to play RTX or DLSS enabled titles, you'll likely see huge gains, potentially even more than 58% in some titles like Cyberpunk 2077. And that's simply because RTX and DLSS is improved on the new GPU series. And I did notice massive performance gains in the 3080 versus my 2080 Ti, which is an even about, it, actually, that's pretty close to the performance we're looking at for the, the laptop 3080s. So in summary, we're looking at a potentially massive performance gain, especially at higher resolutions and in certain titles, at least if this leak is accurate. Now I've got two videos coming up that I'm really excited to share with you guys. First of all, we have my complete and total predictions for 2021 that I'll be releasing here soon, uh, including my predictions for AMD CPU performance gains, Intel gains, when these laptops might become available. It's, it's really hard to know, but I'm gonna do my best to predict what kind of features that we might see as well as when we might be able to get them. And the second video I'm gonna release here before CES is the laptops that have all been leaked. There's been a number of online stores that have leaked different infos about different builds that are gonna become available as well as price points for those laptops. I'm gonna put all of that info in another video. So if you don't wanna miss out on those two videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, so you're notified when I post the new content. Yeah. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button. I'll see you in the next one. Brandon, out. Huzzah.